Without a murder weapon, prosecutors in South Carolina face an uphill battle in convicting one of the state's most famous citizens of murder. They say Alex Murdaugh shot and killed his wife and son, and a tape just played in court might get as close to a smoking gun as they can get without an actual gun. Murdoch claims he never went to the kennels on the family farm until after the killings. That's where the bodies were found. The tape, including showing dogs in the tape, appears to show otherwise. Come here, Come here. Shit. Get him. Hey, he's got a bird in his mouth. Oh, uh, hey, Bubba. It's a guinea. This is a chicken. The important point of that is the voices you hear in the back, which may be one of his sons. Avery Wilkson here, chief investigative reporter for the Post and Courier newspaper out of Charleston, South Carolina, covering the trial. Uh, all right, Avery, uh, is this the thing that they can finally use to show that Alex Murdoch has been lying about everything? This is a really, really big piece of the state's case. You really cannot overstate it. They have been working toward this for several days now. For days, the state has been presenting us audio and testimony from investigators and first responders uh, of Alec Murdoch's first statements to investigators after the slayings, statements in which he claimed repeatedly that he did not go down to the dog kennels that night. Uh, that he took a nap at the Moselle home, that he hadn't spoken with Paul and Maggie, and that he left to go visit his mother uh, and, and texted and, and called Maggie but didn't get a response. Today, they showed uh, actually three times a video uh, where you can't see any members of the family, but you can hear them on background. And they had two witnesses testify with 100% certainty that that was Alec Murdoch's voice in the background, speaking with Maggie and Paul, the victims of the crime, uh, apparently just minutes before the, the crime was actually committed. So this is what prosecutors have been working toward. This is a big reveal, and, and this is a huge part of the case that did, they did we were know able about to, this to nail down and establish today. Do we know about this before? We knew that this video existed. We did not know, we'd never heard it before. We'd never seen it before. Uh, the jury obviously had not heard it before. So, so getting, getting the video introduced into evidence, but then also getting two close friends of the Murdoch family to testify in court today that that was Alec's voice, that was huge. We have not, not heard that before. We would not heard that testimony. Let's listen to a little bit of that testimony. And who did you say you heard? I thought it was Mr. Ellick, but I wasn't exactly sure. Did you give him a percentage? I did. What'd you say? 99%. Did you recognize the voices of your second family? I did. And what voices did you hear? Paul's, Miss Maggie, and Mr. Ellick. And how sure are you now? Positive. 100%? That's correct. And this would place the alleged killer with the victims all together five minutes before the crime occurred I, I, keeps coming back to this what other than sort of just continuing to pound the table and say this is a circumstantial case does the defense have any options here they they're trying some things for sure uh, for one they're going to challenge the state's evidence and and what the state believes as the time of death for maggie and paul Right now, the state is using cell phone data, includes, including when messages were opened and when messages were received and when Maggie and Paul stopped responding to messages and calls to try to establish when they died. Uh, I, I think you can expect that Murdoch's defense attorneys are going to challenge those metrics as, as ways to prove that. And they're also really pushing hard on this idea that there could have been two shooters. And, and consequently, just as prosecutors are using the timeline to kind of condense the timeline and show that Ellick was was close by or was there when the killings happened. Uh, prosecutors are, are trying to use the timeline the same way to show that it's really impossible for one person to have done all of the things that the state alleges or is implying that Ellick did in such a short timeline. So they're trying to push this idea that there had to be someone else involved. And of course, if there was someone else involved, if there were two shooters, then can the jury, you know, convict Ellick Murdoch of being, you know, beyond a reasonable doubt of being the killers of both Maggie and Paul? Yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating, and, and you, as you rightly point out, uh, we'd all been waiting for this piece of evidence, but 
uh, when you hear those voices and then the testimony about them, it certainly uh, cha changes and in, in closes in uh, on Alec Murdoch in a, in, a, in a way. Avery, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to subscribe. Click the red button to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.